Welcome to exercise 17. Hope you're having a beautiful day. So we're going to be looking at precautionary landing. So in short is just off runway landings. This is usually used in emergency situations where you need to land the aircraft for some reason being a technical or problem with uh, maybe a medical emergency with a passenger. Uh, so this is why it's also class classified as an emergency but with power. So with having power, we then actually have a bit of um, just choice to cho uh, choice of where we need to land the air aircraft. You'll see in my description box, I've uh, put something down for you there. It's called the uh, was checks. I have to go through them quickly with you to make sure you understand how we are going to choose our field and actually um, how we're going to fly around the field to do the precaution landing. Now there are ty different types of precaution landings out there but I'm going to demonstrate basically the main relative one that is a little bit longer than most but this is um, how it's supposed to be done in general correctly. So the was checks the W is for wind. We need to determine where the wind is coming from. So in this exercise, we'll say the wind is actually coming from the south, blowing towards the north. So with that being also said, that will then actually help us to check what field we need to utilize for. Now also to see which wind direction is actually blowing, you can use the last known wind direction given to you by ATC or if you're f f um, flying flying in mostly you'll see some smokes or um, so felt fires that just give or even dust giving you an indication of what the wind is doing so then I'm not gonna go into much detail you're gonna get obstacles so we're looking for um, maybe obstacles more or less that I don't know maybe somebody put an old car in the field and or you're just trying to find something with the least amount of obstacle period then we're gonna have a look at the size um, of the air, uh, of our makeshift airfield we're gonna look at the slope so we want something fairly straight and level we don't want to be um, like this hill here on the left hand corner trying to land up or down slope that's not gonna help our situation at all and then also the shape so here we've got a nice rectangular shape that we can use and the surface from what we can see is grass then uh, luckily it's now midday so the sun is on um, top of us so try and also if possible not to land into the sun because if you are going to flare to uh, put the aircraft down on the ground uh, this can then actually just make a little bit of um, life difficult for yourself when trying to land into the sun then the last S is surroundings. So you want to try and find somewhere to land where there's maybe like a little bit of housing around in, in this area. Just so if you've landed the aircraft, you can walk to the houses and or settlements asking the people for assistance. Or should you land it but the landing, landing didn't go that well and for some reason you got hurt or can't get out of the aircraft, then at least some people is close by that would hopefully come and assist you with that so now without further ado let's get started in actually flying the circuits for the precaution landing so basically there's going to be three phases oh we're going to set ourselves up then we're going to start with the three phases namely the high inspection low inspection and the landing so let's look how that is gonna go from now. Let me just move a little bit higher so you can see I'll try my best to make a plan for you as we fly. And just so you can actually see, let me rather get the outside view going for you from this side. So what do you wanna do if you pick the field? A good pilot always know at least the elevation of the surroundings. So here is roughly 4,200 feet. So we try and fly more or less 1,000 feet over our elected field. So we're going to try and land on this nice green patch right here. 
So what, and remember the wind is coming from the south blowing towards the north. So we want to land this way into the wind to help to slow us down. So once over at the field, you fly about straight 10 seconds and then we'll set ourselves up on uh, almost like a downwind. From here, I would also like to do just keep everything like to for 15 degrees as well, and just keep a lookout on my obstacles or what's around. So here we've got a mountain, so we don't want to actually get too close. What we also want to do is we want to now like descend to about 1,000 feet above the ground level, keeping the ridges more or less in sight, uh, just to get like an overview of our field and you want to do it in this way where you can actually keep an eye out on your field at all times now we are going to set ourselves up for the high inspection this is roughly can be done between 500 and 1000 feet above ground level so we'll just keep descending a little bit to about um, let's make it 4700 uh, feet just to get close by our landing field for a little bit more better scenario of looking. So with the eye inspection, it actually falls part of your worst check. So we're just looking for is this a suitable landing field that we can actually land the aircraft? Is there nothing that can actually hinder us? And so far it looks nice and it's a nice gr grass field so it seems to be a good possible runway selection that we are going to make a runway so now what i want you to do i'm just going to pause here for a second when you need to set yourself up and now we're going to use this section right here as our runway threshold and remember we got to do the high inspection low inspection and our circuit so always now start using this point to say okay I've completed my high inspection I've completed my low inspection and I'm starting with my circuit otherwise you're gonna start getting yourself lost and start doing uh, your checks on different points that's not on the correct point so just to keep it now easy and focus perfect so this is now our high inspection that we actually do like I say we're now just doing a quick screening of is this field that we're going to try and land in more or less sufficient remember we're looking outside and then inside because we need to make sure are we staying at correct altitude and airspeed as you can see i am keeping a little bit higher because we've got some ridges in front of us okay now i'm just going to add a bit of power for the climb and with this type of landings always gives you yourself a little bit of space because you're flying it exactly the same as a circuit but I see always students they do not give themselves enough space and therefore their turns turn into steep turns or medium turns close to the ground that you don't want you want to keep it to about 15 to 20 degrees with sufficient speed and then have your eyes on your selected field and always you can from here also use that 45 degree angle once you've actually touched or in line 45 degree angle with your field then you can commence the next turn so this is now still forming part of the high inspection we'll see how that goes this was exercise and to save you some time on the simulator i'm just going to execute here and there a bit of uh, 30 degree turns but when you practice it i want you to keep to about 15 degrees so this is just to speed things up a little bit on the simulator so i know you guys don't have all day so now we're just completing the eye inspection from this side of the field all looks good so we'll say okay let's elect that runway to use so from here what I like to do, I like to squawk 770, that's for emergency, so then radar can also see there is an emergency in progress. We're waiting for a 45 degree angle, and now we're going to do what's called a low inspection. This low inspection about three to 500 feet above the ground that it's done. And it's also done to actually confirm our field is big or long enough for us to land the aircraft in. 
With that also being said, remember there's heals and everything so you gotta work with it. If there's too much heals, you can always elect to fly or find another patch of land that you can actually get um, to use. So now we're gonna set up ourselves for the upwind, but we need to slow the aircraft down to about 70 knots or 80 knots and apply then 10 degree of flaps. Reason being for this is so we can actually time it accurately. So we're just waiting for the 70 knots. We're in the white arc, applying flaps. Just 10 degrees. So what the rule of thumb is, you wanna be about 500 feet above the ground. We're gonna fly a little bit closer this time. Uh, and we are gonna start our timing. So remember, I said here's the threshold, so now we're coming in for the low inspection. Roughly 300 feet to 500 feet above the ground. Once we are beam this threshold, we are gonna count for 20 seconds. So let's just start the timer from here on my watch. I'll start now. Okay, start. So what you wanna do is, you want to fly, basically f slow flight about 70 knots. There's 10 seconds to see if this field is going to be long enough for you to actually land. And there's 15 seconds. And wait for it. Now we've got 20 seconds. So now you see we've got actu actually excess field available. So if you can count to 20 seconds before your makeshift runway is up, then uh, then you will know you can actually you can actually make the field. If the 20 seconds is or the field is up before you've reached to 20 seconds, that means you need to actually find a new field as the field will be too short. So that's our low inspection and with that counting we also just check it and keep a closer look on the um, on the field if there's no obstacles lying. So now we're climbing back to 1000 feet because we are now going to actually do our, our downwind checks. Um, our, our circuit, sorry, and we want to start with the downwind checks shortly. Perfect. So from now we're climbing way 75. You're gonna do a radio call to say um, in the area that you're in, you are Cessna 172. You are doing a precautionary landing, and then whatever is relevant for a landmark that you can use that everybody knows about, you are gonna refer to that landmark and tell them also the reason for your precautionary landing while climbing 1,000 feet above the ground level. Now you're gonna say for your passengers, passengers, we are gonna do a precautionary landing. Um, you do not have to worry about it. it um, it's planned, we are trained for this. And just keep calm, but as a precautionary landing, I want you to brace on my command and just unlatch the doors now. So if we land, that the um, door doesn't get st uh, stuck. And now we'll just also, and as you go, you actually then do your radio calls as you would actually um, say that you're gonna land. So now you can actually tell them, everybody, you are now downwind for your field location and start with your downwind checks. So we're gonna come back a little bit on the power. We're gonna go 10 degree of flaps because we are within the white arc. Okay, and then we know the ground is more or less 4,200 feet, so we're just gonna keep it roughly more or less here so we can clear the mountains, keeping an eye out on the field. In actual situation, your door in an aircraft will not be open like this. The wind flow will actually just um, push it again so it would almost be almost closed, but at least it's unlatched in that scenario. Perfect. Okay, so now remember this is not a low inspection more, so this is for the landing, so you can fly it out a little bit more than usual. Give yourself 
good enough time for the descent remember when, if we're ever turning into onto base you need to descend 500 feet above ground level so we're just waiting to clear this ridges okay so now we can start turning base keeping the uh, runway inside if possible depending if you're flying a high wing or low wing We'll then also get onto radio, tell everybody we are now turning base and we and onto finals for our makeshift runway. We're gonna now shut down the radios and we'll contact them on um, on the frequency once we've landed. Otherwise, they need to s send help if they haven't heard from us in in about one minute. So from here, just shut down all non-essential items. Leave the fuel pump on. Okay, and then apply flaps as required, and we are going down. Whoops, sorry, let me just raise the nose a little bit. What you can do, keep a four finger attitude towards your landing field and your dashboard, and this would bring you nicely down towards the field. Okay, so now we're getting closer and remember always your aircraft if it flares it still floats so keep a nice keep flaring in mind okay we've got our flap settings we want we're gonna turn off the masters we're waiting for the stall and it will land uh, safely on the ground and apply full brakes Okay, so what I wanted also now for you to demonstrate when you go into into that flare. Let me just shut down from here. So what I want you to demonstrate on a flare, remember your aircraft still is gonna travel over the ground. So when you say brace brace for your passengers, make sure it's at a correct time. Because you don't want to tell them to brace and then after three four second no seconds nothing happens because human nature will then actually tend then to actually look up and um, as they want to see why haven't we crash landed or landed yet and then you actually land or cause a crash and make everything worse so you need to time where you are gonna put your brace command in and so you can also go ahead and practice that um, in your home sim so now we've landed successfully now you can turn off also like I've done the motors and magnetos just put your battery master on and you can put your radios back on and get onto the frequency and tell everybody okay you've made a successful landing in the field um, say two nautical two nautical miles from this landmark or 20 nautical miles north please send assistance and we'll get onto the nearest ATC or a radar frequency and then they'll send help your way fantastic and that is then it for your precautionary landing I hope I made it a little bit more easier here all the checks that you need to do is in the comment box below and safe flying and I'll see you on the next lesson. Have a lucky day.